CounteractCoach.com. Patient anatomy and healing greatly affect the visual outcomes. You know, think about it. The visual results of your surgery depend on both your technique and technologies and precision, but also the patient factors like their healing ability or even the variations in their anatomy. And you perform a beautiful cataract surgery for a patient or beautiful LASIK surgery with the expectation that the patient's gonna achieve outstanding visual results. And that happens the vast majority of the time. Sometimes we have patients who are less than pleased and we try to temper their expectations ahead of time, explaining what the limitations of technology are. I mean, we know there's no way to get a 70 year old patient and have her see like she did when she was 22 years old. Just doesn't exist regardless of what technology or techniques you're using. So we have to temper patient expectations. But even then, we can do an outstanding surgery with no complications, technically perfect, with the best technology, the most precision possible. And the patients have a good visual result, but not enough to meet their lofty expectations. So we have to explain to the patients that it's both our surgery, our techniques, our technology, the way we did the precision parts of the surgery, plus their individual anatomy, their healing ability, all that together is responsible for the visual outcomes after ocular surgery. Let's look at a couple examples here. Let's talk about anatomy first. Now, when you take a photo with a camera, you know that the lens and the focus are important, but equally critical is the aperture size, or f-stop in camera terms, and that determines the depth of field. For our patients, that aperture is the pupil, the pupil size, and it varies greatly among the population. While the pupil size does tend to decrease with age, and that's helpful to increase the depth of field, there can still be a considerable variation among patients. A larger pupil allows more light to enter the eye, but also lessens the depth of focus within the eye and the depth of field in the patient's view of the environment. When considering refractive targeting for lenses with central focusing elements, such as extended depth of focus lenses, the pupil size can help determine where to aim. For a patient with a larger four and a half millimeter pupil, only about 25% of the incoming light is gonna go through the central zone of the eye well. Whereas in a patient with a smaller two and a half millimeter diameter pupil, 80% of the incoming light goes through that central focusing element. That's quite a dramatic difference. This means that for the patient with larger pupils, perhaps we should aim for a slightly myopic outcome, such as minus a quarter or even minus a half diopter. Whereas for the patient with smaller pupils, aiming for Plano to even plus a quarter may give better visual results. Now also keep in mind this pupil size when we're using a newer design monofocal lens. There's certain lenses now that have a central one millimeter bumper increase in curvature. This is an area that's very small, about 0.8 square millimeters. So it has a minimal impact for a large four and a half millimeter pupil, where only 5% of the incoming light is affected by that. But for an eye with a smaller two and a half millimeter pupil, this little central bump can have a little more effect. About 16% of incoming light will go through that zone. Remember too, the corneal aberrations, such as astigmatism, spherical aberration, other higher order aberration changes can also affect the depth of focus by trading some image quality for a wider or larger range. And all these measurements vary among patients and they can significantly affect the post-operative visual results. Now, healing is another factor, and it's not always predictable. Imagine if we had 100 patients, and we gave them each the identical cut on their arm. Same length, same depth, same everything. We both understand that there's a variation in healing. Most patients will heal very well. Some will heal very aggressively in keloid. Some will heal very poorly. And this obviously applies to ocular surgery as well. The patient's healing ability varies from patient to patient. Most are average, and that's what we're counting on. But even look at the example of a patient with bad diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes with high blood sugars. We know whether it's the cut on the arm or it's the eye surgery, they're not gonna heal as well. And that's a very important factor. Now there are patients also with pre-existing conditions. One in five patients, or 20% of our 70 year olds and older, 
who have cataract surgery have an epiretinal membrane or macular pucker, pucker or traction on that retina. And doing a perfect cataract surgery with zero complications, the patient can still end up with cystoid macular edema in the post op period. Now, it's not the surgeon's fault. The surgery was technically perfect. There were no complications. It's the patient's anatomy and patient's healing response. Now, immediately after cataract surgery, patients tend to be blown away with their vision. It's amazing, what a huge change. And part of it is, yes, that delta, the before and after is so dramatic, patients are just blown away by how much better the vision is. But remember too, we're taking out a thick human lens. The crystalline lens with the cataract is four to five millimeters thick. That's like the size of an M&M &M candy. But the man-made lens we put on the eye, the IOL or intraocular lens, is very thin, one millimeter thin or even thinner. So what happens in the immediate period? Well, we place the eye well in the eye where we want it. And that's why right after surgery, the vision's fantastic. As the patient heals up, that capsule bag contracts or shrink wraps down to hold the new lens. And that lens, due to the patient's healing, can shift anterior or posterior, thereby changing the effect of lens position and changing a little bit of the focus. You obviously know, for a patient who's watching this, if you hold a magnifying glass over a newspaper, where you hold it definitely affects the focus. And in the eye, moving that lens from your healing ability, a fraction of a millimeter can perceptibly change the visual focus of the eye. And again, the surgery is done beautifully. It's the patient's healing factors that are at play here. Patients are also surprised sometimes when I tell them that the pupil is not actually the center of your cornea or even the center of your iris. It's actually slightly nasally decentered. So when you implant a trifocal eye well, you need that lens to be beautifully centered. And then you want those diffractive rings lined up right there in the patient pupil and hopefully their visual axis is also there. That's why we check things like angle alpha and angle kappa. And we use the Purkinjian because to help center up these lenses, like here, an extended depth of focus lens can be centered with a great deal of accuracy. But again, keep in mind, even with great centration, we need to remember the patients have a variability in anatomy with regards to their angle alpha, angle kappa, and how they're gonna heal, that lens can shift. So remember this, even again, perfectly centered lens at the end of surgery can slightly shift due to the patient's healing response. So in summary, performing a beautiful cataract surgery is important to give patients the best vision possible. We'll do a technically perfect surgery, we'll use the best technologies, the most precision possible, but that's not the whole story. Their healing response is also important in achieving the post-op outcome and even their existing ocular anatomy and even other conditions, comorbidities. So the next time that you have a patient who feels that the results of her surgery, even though it was just perfect or less than she had expected, remember, we should remind her that it's probably your unusual anatomy and your less than stellar healing response that is to blame. So patients, if you're watching this, work together with your surgeon. We wanna give you the best outcome. We're on the same page. Both you and the patient and me, the surgeon, want you to have the absolute best vision possible. But remember, it's not all my fault. <laughs> you have to play a role in the healing and your anatomy as well. But do not worry, even if you're not the best healer and you have unusual anatomy, we can still give you the best vision of your life. Thanks for watching.